just to prove to you that you can win with anything at the beginning of the format. The Ultra Ball can win with anything, and he sucks terribly at everything. He can't even catch me a girlfriend. That catch rate is supposed to be higher than a Great Ball. Unless it's Gen 1 Pokemon, then it's actually reversed. Let's dive on into, well, you can win with just about anything at the beginning of a format. So let's dive on into it, shall we? The ever living boo boo stain off of that subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen. So we can get to our goal of 1,000 subscribers. We're only 40 away, ladies and gentlemen, which for a channel my size, that sounds like a lot. But I mean, I get a couple YouTube shorts that blow the fuck up, then all of a sudden we're there. So smash it so that we can get to our goal. So I want to talk about the beginning of this new format. It's officially October 3rd. I had to double check my clock <laughs> to make sure. And uh, really, I wanted to talk about how, well, the beginning of the format is like a honeymoon phase for like a new video game or a new Call of Duty, right? Because at the beginning of the format, it's honestly a lot easier to top or even just win in general with something that is off the radar or fairly new because people are still trying to solve the format. Formulas are still trying to be solved, so to speak. You know, I've been testing with Runic a lot lately because I feel like I kind of want to main Runic for this format. Uh, just because of the fact that it's totally rogue. It really doesn't care if it gets milled by like the new milling support that's coming out in Magnificent Mavens. On top of that too, uh, the new regional list got posted a few days ago for Darkwing Blast season. And uh, yeah, I've got a regional that happens the day after Darkwing Blast drops. So I kind of have to play something that can probably play around the milling stuff because everybody in the model wants to play it. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that those type of concepts can be applied to any deck. You know, if you're playing something like Salamangre, you probably have a higher chance of topping an event or even like winning your locals at the beginning of a new format compared to a format that's already established three to four months in because people are going to have their established decks unless you're side decking or main decking cards in your deck to beat those meta decks because those formulas have been solved so you know exactly what cards hurt them and where their choke points are in their builds then uh, in that regard, it's a bit different. If you know those things, it can be helpful to you, but not as helpful as like the beginning of a format. You know, let's say a regional is happening this weekend and you take Salamangre. Well, it's a brand new fresh format. You're going to have a higher chance of doing well at that event using tech cards and things like that in your build that are off the radar compared to a solved format. And I think that that's what's really interesting about this format because yeah, We've got Mystic Mine at full power. We've got Demise of the Land at full power, which, as of the making of this video, they're like $10 to $11. The thing needs a fucking reprint really, really bad. Like, Lord have mercy, it's it's toxic. Um, you know, yeah, we've got Metaverse at one and things like that. But even with that, you know, who's to say in this new format people aren't going to be side decking more macro hate or main decking more macro hate because, you know, it's another Mystic Mine format. So you know, people are going to be even more prepared for it now, most likely, compared to previous the, the previous format, because, uh, like, now people are just getting sick and tired of Mystic Mind. There's got to be people out there that are just going to be absolutely prepared in their side deck or even their main deck to just beat the shit out of Mystic Mind. And, like, that's what's funny about this format is, like, I was talking to someone the other day, and uh, I said it's basically the old format, but with a new coat of paint. And I don't really think that that's a bad thing because we got back cards that were banned for years like Substitute and Cyberjar. We have new toys to play with in that regard. Cards like a Pointer of the Red Lotus aren't going to be as blowoutable. Like if you just activate two or I've seen even three played in one turn, it, like that's just disgusting. And so to be able to reel things in like that is really good. Now, with that being said, are we going into a tier... Oh. Ugh. Jesus Christ, I'm so sorry. I, I did that in the last video too. Are we going into a tier zero format with tier element? Debatably, yes. Is Sprite knocked down a peg because Rodent Totem's banned? Debatably, yes. Because there are other ways that you could play those decks. But again, those formulas are still being solved. Now, if you've got some spicy tech that you're able to play in like your Sprite deck that people aren't expecting, you're going to be able to lead the charge in, you know, the Sprite department in that regard, right? And I think it's a really fun time. Like, yeah, we still have Mystic Mine and, you know, the artifacts. But 
it's still a really good format. I'm honestly enjoying this format a lot more than I did last format. Now that could also be because of the fact that it got very stale, but this format, at least it's fresh. You have a fresh coat of paint, fresh coat of everything. Mystic Mine is jerking off in the corner. <laughs> but, you know, we understand better, like, every deck that can play this is going to fucking play it. And you just have to play through it. Like, I had someone comment on my Mystic Mine deck profile where they said, three Twin Twister, three Cosmic Cycle, and GG. Yes and no. I mean, if you get hit recurse seal on both of those, then you're kind of fucked. Um, but... It goes to show the mindset that players have, especially going deep into a new format at the beginning, is that they're going to be side decking the back row hate. They're going to be side decking things that were issues from last format to beat those cards. Now, will Mystic Mind be as much of an issue in this format? I think so, yeah. Because especially when you look at the milling support with like Kelbeck that makes both players mill five, Aigido makes both players mill five, potentially makes you mill fucking ten. Because if exchange of the spirits in your grave, it can make you or the opponent mill five. That's disgusting. And so I think we're going to see Mystic Mind more in that regard just to be able to shut down cards like that. You know, you have Mystic Mind. They've got no monsters. If they, you know, you have no monsters. They've got one. Well, now all their milling monsters are dead. What are they going to do? Hit you with the exchange of the spirit? If you have 15 cards, maybe. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm making this video late at night. I'm absolutely exhausted. Oh, Jesus Christ. Try to relax your anus. Anyway, so what are some ways that you can kind of catapult yourself to winning in this new format? Honestly, it comes down to playing a rogue deck. You know, you may think that playing a meta deck is going to help get you some free wins because the formula is still trying to be solved. But that's also the issue with playing a meta deck is that the formula hasn't been solved. So you're still trying to figure things out. Your opponent's still trying to figure things out. They're going to side deck things that they know beat your meta deck, whether you're playing Sprite, uh, Branded, Sword Soul, Tier Elements, you name it. They're going to side deck things that help in that regard, no matter how generic it is. And then at the same time, a lot of people are probably bringing over their old decks in the previous format to this new format. Like I'm play testing Runic, I'm using the top 32 Oceana build. So I'm playing the three Cyber Valleys, the Monster Gate, the Reasoning, the Mystic Minds, and the main deck with Demise Land, all that stuff. Because other than Red Reboot in the side deck, which I just took it out and threw in a second sphere mode, there was nothing else to change in the deck. It was perfectly transferable. Now you could argue I can maybe play things like Royal Decree because Eldritch might be more of an issue because Red Reboot's banned. But even then, it's like I'm playing fucking Runic. Like, I'm not going to give a shit about Eldritch. Eldritch can eat my ass. All your shit's going to be banished. <laughs> Especially whenever I start looping all my Garys because I used Reasoning or Monster Gate and milled like 15 fucking cards. Yeah, that, that's a disgusting play, I might add. So, uh, all that to say that this format's good. Like, yeah, there's issues with it. We're going to probably see even more issues down the line. But as of right now, you can take just about anything and win with it. And these are the reasons why. And I think that that goes to show how good of a format we're in right now, despite things that are on the horizon that could potentially become issues. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Hopefully, I didn't bore you to tears. I, I think that it's interesting. I think it's fun to see all of the top decks that are coming around. Keep in mind, as well, that we just got the Crystal Beast Structure deck, and that deck is fucking bananas. Like, have you read Overdrive Rainbow Dragon, or whatever the hell it's called? It has 11,000 attack, and if it doesn't battle, it just tributes itself, shuffles everything back. You get out five Crystal Beasts and attack for game. That is... That's Jesse Anderson 101. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.